Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a 1943 dress pattern and in this case for me it's for a Valentine's Day, a more casual Valentine's Day look. I really like the 1940s for a more effortless look in terms of a simple dress because I don't have to use a very full skirt so they're fun to wear in early spring in my opinion. I'm going to be making this out of a rayon fabric. I want to thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and spending your time here with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. I look forward to seeing you over there. And if you'd like to tip me virtually, you can leave me a tip on Ko-fi. Um, the link will be in the description below. Thank you all for all of your questions on my last video. I'm going to go work on the Q&A video right now. So that will be up next week. Um, so let's get into the pattern in the fabric. Today's pattern, we're going to be using McCall's 5633 size 12 bust 30. I will be making view A. It is the short sleeve version of this pattern and it comes in three versions, uh, short sleeve, quarter length sleeve and long sleeve, which is not pictured here. And here is the back of the pattern. It's in pretty poor condition, but the pattern pieces were in great condition, so that's always really nice. Here are the fabric requirements, and here is the pattern pieces, and a picture of all of the style options. And this pattern was copywritten in 1944 by the McCall's Corporation. I will pop in a photo of what the pattern should look like uh, that I found online so you get a better idea of what the pattern art looks like. So now let's get into the fabric for this project. For today's fabric, I will be using this rayon with this stipple or stubble like dot on it. It is a really pretty material. It has lots of flow to it. It's very drapey. And pretty I felt like it would look really nice with this ruching at the bust and even the little gathers at the sleeves so I'm really excited to work with this fabric and now let's get into the cutting of this project it's been a really long time since I've worked with rayon and whenever I work with rayon I automatically think a 1940s pattern the drape of the fabric always lends itself well to those cute little ruffles and delicate puff sleeves. So I was really excited to use this fabric for a pattern that I have been wanting to make for a while. Before we jump into sewing, I wanted to give a couple of tips and tricks to help with very drapey, shifty fabric that I find very helpful. First, I prefer to cut these types of fabric with a rotary cutter and pattern weights. However, if you don't have those things, I would use lots and lots of pins to keep the pattern on the fabric and then carefully use scissors to cut so the fabric doesn't shift too much. Before cutting my fabric, I prepped my fabric by giving it a wash and then when I pressed it, I used spray starch. Then for machine prep, I like to use thinner Microtex needles for soft drapey fabric such as this. Fine needles always work better. Then you want to fix the tension on your sewing machine. I like to reduce my tension and use the smallest stitch length so that way it doesn't gather and buckle as I sew. To find out what settings best for your sewing machine, it's always best to consult your manual or use a test swatch to practice sewing a little to see what works best for you in your project before moving forward on your main pattern pieces. Last but not least, always check the seam allowances on your vintage patterns, especially those that are unprinted from the 40s or mail order patterns. They usually have a half inch seam allowance instead of the standard 5 eighths that we see today and patterns from the 1950s and up. Also read through your pattern directions carefully because they also sometimes have a different seam allowance for the underarm seams, usually to allow the wearer to better adjust the fit at the side seams or let out the dress later. This rayon is almost exactly the same on both sides, so in order to keep from mixing the wrong side and the right side, I put a yellow X with Taylor's chalk on the wrong side from here on out on all of my pieces. For me, shifty fabrics always have a high chance of stretching out or getting distorted around the seam lines, so I take this opportunity 
to stay stitch all of my pieces. I did stay stitch the back pieces. I think you can see it in the clip from before, but now I'm doing all of the rest. This can be a permanent or temporary stitch that is sewn within the seam allowance. So that way the edges don't stretch out when sewn. Also be careful of the tension that you're placing on the fabric while you sew because you don't want to stretch it out as you do this. And then when you're done, take it over to your iron to press everything flat again. Now it's time to mark that big dot that you see on the fabric and I am going to just add a small snip right there so I can avoid having to put any more markings on my fabric. Plus the chalk won't stay for very long. So this will just let me know where to stop sewing on the center front of the dress. So I'm working on seaming the center front and in this particular clip I sewed it incorrectly. I actually sewed the top shut and left the bottom open. I did correct this in a later clip which I lost the footage to because my toddler got a hold of the clicker for my camera. Once that mistake is corrected I do a stay stitch all the way around the princess side front pieces and then I add a gathering stitch so that way I can gather up the princess seam. You should use two gathering stitches for this but I only used one because it had such a shallow seam allowance and I didn't want my feed dogs to eat up my fabric. A good tip to avoid this is to use some tissue paper underneath your fabric, but I didn't have any so I moved forward without it. Now it's time to sew the side front and the center front pieces together and I always put the gathered side on top so that way I can adjust the gathers as I sew it down. The pattern and pattern instructions did instruct you to gather between the two notches on the princess side front piece, but it does not tell you where the gathered should start and stop on the center front. So in order to make sure that it matched perfectly on the mirrored side of the center front piece, make sure that you take great care to make sure your, even, your gathers are exactly the same on both sides. Moving right along with the construction of the bodice, it's time to sew the shoulder seams. I'm doing a French seam for this to reduce how much bra edges that I have. I didn't do French seams for this entire pattern because it would have been a little bit more difficult with how thin the fabric is and how shallow the seam allowance is. You could have always gone in and added a little bit extra so you could have like five eighths of a seam allowance, but I didn't wanna be bothered with all that extra work, so I just did it where I could. Now it's time to prep the two piece sleeves. I am ironing in the fold for the hem, and then after this, I go in with the half inch seam allowance. I do this before sewing anything together, so that way I have an easier guide and I don't have to stretch the fabric to iron in the hem later because like I said this type of fabric is quite shifty. Prepping the sleeve first makes it really easy that once the sleeve is assembled and attached to the dress all I have to do is fold along the pressed seam and hem it by hand. One thing the pattern pieces did not do was mark the gathering stitches on the back sleeve piece, only the front sleeve piece. So I went ahead and copied that onto the other side. So that way they both gathered like the pictures and the instructions say. And then I sew them all together like you see me doing now. Once the sleeves were assembled, I attached it to the main bodice using French seams. And now I am French seaming the right side of the bodice because the left side needs to be left open above the notch so that way I can put in a zipper. So that is what I am doing here. And then I'll show you the type of closure they intended later. Now I am sewing down the facing piece on the center front to close up those raw edges. I use some interfacing for this so you get a nice crisp layer. After you're done sewing this on, you're going to want to understitch this piece in there. They do not tell you to understitch, so this information is assumed. After this, I go forward and cut out my skirt pieces. By this point, only the bodice had been cut out because I don't like for all of my pieces to be cut out and risk them being stretched or misplaced and things like that. So I only cut out what I have time to sew for that day or the time period that I'm working in. This skirt is made up of so many pieces that I decided to work with the back first. So I cut out the back three pieces first and I have them pinned right here. And I prepped my skirt pieces exactly the same way that I did with the sleeve. And I went ahead and did a quick 
press of the hem and then I put in the seam allowance as well. So once everything is put together, all I have to do is fold by hand and then sew the hem. Before sewing your pieces together, make sure you put a stay stitch at the waist seam so that way your skirt pieces and sections don't stretch out. And then I am doing a French seam for the three back pieces. I won't be using the French seam for the front because the front is assembled in a different kind of way. And I was a little confused on how to put it together. And after I was done, I still don't think that I did it correctly. So yeah, it just wasn't gonna work out and I decided to follow the instructions as closely as possible so that way I can do this right. Also because I'm French seaming a half inch seam allowance, I am sewing it first wrong side together at a quarter inch seam allowance. Then I press, trim, and sew again at another quarter. To sew up the front panels of the skirt, you're gonna want to mark seven inches down from the top to the center on all pieces. Then you're gonna wanna sew the half inch seam allowance from the top of the waist down seven inches on all pieces. Once you're done with that seam, you're going to want to clip the seam allowance right at the end of that seam and press that open. Now for the rest of the skirt, I assumed that this is what the lap seam was, but now I'm not so sure because it looked kind of pleated in the artwork. But basically I pressed under a half inch or the remaining seam allowance for the rest of the skirt. And then I put that piece over the center front and I pinned it down. And then I go over to the sewing machine and I top stitch this in. Um, I do this really close to the seam so it's kind of edge stitched down because I wanted to make sure that all of the seams were even on every single panel without having to mark the fabric with chalk. But now I'm not so sure that that was the way to go. I didn't see any real reference online to doing this correctly. And even though they did show a diagram in the instructions, which I will pop here, I definitely could not figure it out um, or visualize it because it's not something that I've ever done before. But I think the finished results is quite pretty, so I cannot complain. I'm really happy with my dress and hopefully you guys agree later. And if you do have any tips on how to do this properly or even a video that I could watch, please feel free to leave it down below so that way I can actually learn this technique. Once the skirt pieces are completed, I do attach it to the bodice. And of course, it's gonna be time for the closure. A lot of 1940s dresses have you use like a snap closure, like a sew and snap closure. And I have only done this method one time before, but I realized that I do not like this method because it does snap open really easily. Another alternative would be like a hook and eye, but I find that a zipper is just really simple and easy and a very secure way to wear your garment. Before attaching your zipper, add some interfacing to the seam allowance so that way it doesn't stretch out while you sew the zipper on. Next, I make shoulder pads. I'll pop in a photo on how they intended you to make it. I did not do it this way because I didn't have cotton wadding, so I used cotton batting instead. I cut two seven by seven squares like the instructions directed, and then I did the same with some cotton batting, and I trimmed that down a little. After that, I folded them into triangles and top stitched with a zigzag stitch and secured them to the shoulders of the dress. After that, my dress was completed. So I wanna thank you guys so much for being here. I wanna thank everyone who purchased a pin from me. I officially sold out of my old merch, but don't worry, new merch is coming. I actually have my illustrator working on some of the newer designs. So new designs will be heading to my store very soon. If you are new to my channel, which most of you are, I do a Black History Month a project every single year and I am about to start that after this project. I also plan on filming my Q&A video as soon as I'm done filming this. I have lots of projects ahead of me and I'm really super excited to share. If you'd like to support me further beyond liking and sharing this video, which does a world of help for me on this channel, you can leave me a virtual tip on Kofi. The link will be in the description below. You can also follow me in real time over on Instagram at Serena underscore. I'd love to have you over there. 
For this Valentine's Day, I hope that you are surrounded by family and friends who love and care for you and that you love too. I hope you have a wonderful and safe celebration. I look forward to seeing you in my very next video. And here I am modeling the final results. And this is a hat that I made a very long time ago, maybe four years ago, with ribbon and cotton sateen on a wire frame. It was a Vogue pattern I'll leave in the description below if you're interested. It's a modern Vogue pattern. And it's one of my most proud hat creations because all of the flowers were created by hand with multiple lengths of ribbon and I just love how it turned out. So I'll see you in the next one, bye.